jamming in the jungle. When he grows up, he'll be dangerous. The all-new Hit List with Tarzan Dan. Get watching, because it's a jungle out there. Did you grow up in Canada? Were you alive in the 90s? Did you love YTV? F*** yeah, you did. Gee whiz, Dan, what was that like, the Backstreet Boys calling you out? Uh, tell me from your perspective that situation. What happened was they were going to play a concert in town, and I got contacted by one of the guys. I think it was either AJ or Howie. And they said, dude, are you going to be in town? Do you want to go to the concert? I was like, of course I want to go to the concert, but I already have tickets. I'm cool. I'll see you. And so they did a special thing in the afternoon where they um, – where they had fans only. And so we got invited to that and uh, went and saw them perform for the fans, just the certain number of fans. And then they, we hung out for a bit, caught up, all that kind of stuff. And they're like, dude, we want you to come to the show tonight. I said, well, I already have tickets. I'm good. And they're like, no, no, no. We want to give you other tickets. And I was like, okay, cool. Sounds good. And uh, so anyway, we went off to dinner and then I'm getting these text messages from the guys like, dude, are you in your seat yet? And I'm like, no, we're stuck in traffic. We're <laughs> trying to get to your concert. And uh, when I get in the seat, I'll let you know. So I had no idea what was about to happen, but I guess they had chosen that seat because then they knew where I would be sitting and that the spotlight was going to be on me and that I would be a total mess. And I thank me. I was I literally cried. I did because it's one of those things where um, it's it's really I don't even know how to explain it other than when somebody connects you with a, a, a band like that that has had such massive success and then they say you were a big part of why all these guys are rich and I'm not. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's a really wonderful feeling because you feel like there's a certain validation to some degree that, you know, what you did and the friendship that you still hold with them is literally real, not just, hey, we got where we were going because you played us on TV and played us on the radio. So um, uh, it was a really great moment. And they loved the fact that they had totally surprised me. So in a world of showbiz such as that, where nothing is kind of genuine, it's nice to see that something was absolutely. Let's just clear this. You were the first person to play them in Canada, correct? Well, no, actually I wasn't. I was the first person to play them on English television and English radio. Montreal had already picked up on what was going on in Europe. So they were playing them on the radio and they did a concert in Montreal. The record label flew us to Montreal to interview them because they knew it was gonna be huge. And then what happened was they uh, traveled to Toronto and we shot Hitless the next day and then we launched them. Wow. Bing. Okay, next, the Cavastioni. Hi, my name is Katie Livick. I um, come from Montreal West. And I was wondering if Nick Carter has a girlfriend. And if he doesn't, I think he's gorgeous and I want him real bad. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, lucky. Let me answer that question. No. Don't, I don't have a girlfriend at the moment, but always looking. So you have this unique experience that not a lot of other people have because over the last 20 something years, you've, as you said, had a genuine type of friendship, something real. So you knew them pre-fame. They weren't the first boy band, but at the same time, the level of success that they reached in the 90s was nothing short of spectacular. And you know what? And they still have it going on. I mean, the fact that they're selling out all those shows in Vegas is huge. Like, uh, that, you know, that's just the, the testament to how many hit songs they had and how liked they were. And, uh, and just, you know, there wasn't a lot of controversy around this band. They were just good guys who, who uh, you know, make great music that people love singing along to. And whether you're um, a, a woman who was a fangirl or whether you were a guy who didn't admit that you like Backstreet Boys, but when your girlfriend asked you to take her to the concert, you went. <laughs> <laughs> I had no girlfriends back in 95, that's for sure. But uh, okay. <laughs> I was an go. ugly child then. Um, <laughs> well, it is, of course, the hit list. And, of course, we have Elena and Jen. Thank you very much for telling us about the Backstreet Boys. No 
Now, because you did something really nice for me, I'm going to do something nice for you guys. <laughs> it's the Backstreet Boys! They're here! Come on in, guys. Come on in. What, did we lose two back there? That was one of the things I loved about the hit list, was that we would play Bush and Smashing Pumpkins, and we'd play Backstreet and the Spice Girls, and people would watch the show. They would watch it because they knew all the music. Nowadays, uh, too many, I think, formats have become segregated, and so people don't get a taste of all the good music that is out there. You got a really good point there. Like uh, The hit list was a delightful type of soup, if you will, that mm -hmm. put everything in there. And I remember in HMV, when I first started buying and listening to music, let's say about 1997, when I started to come into my own, start stealing my sister's old tapes and stuff like that, uh, heavily getting into Green Day. That was one of my biggest influences. I remember in HMV, everything was just kind of just put into uh, pop rock. Yeah, you'd see Green Day and Hanson, yeah. who were one of your favorite bands, I understand. Oh, <laughs> the thing about Hanson is that uh, now that I get older and stuff like that, like there's this whole part of you yourself when you're a child and you're growing up and you're coming into your own, you're not sure of yourself yet, and you're terrified about what people think about you. It's, um, it's a unique experience to look back and say, those kids were actually playing their instruments. Those kids were singing a cappella. Sitting on the side, waiting for a sign, hoping that my love will change. Whoa, whoa. Reaching for a hand that I'll understand. Someone who feels the same. How about the Moffats? Yeah. Right? The Moffats were a band yeah. on stage. They played all the instruments. They sang legit. And I think that that was the thing, is that music, um, as much as there was some electronic music that came in in the 90s, or the disposable pop, and there were mm. a certain number of people that were only writing all the hit songs, be it Britney Spears or Backstreet or NSYNC or whatever, uh, it was just a good time. And when you think of that music being, like you said, 20-ish years old, you go back to it and you feel good. Green Day is still around and making relevant music. Who would have ever thought that band would have a Broadway show that was a massive hit, right? It's because they had the integrity and it wasn't just about great songs, it was about the fact that they were actually talented. Yeah. And uh, yeah, actual talent. I think uh, I think in the nineties there was like forces behind the scenes, and there was good studio production to make people sound the way they sounded sometimes. But comparatively to the digital crutch people use now, just to get through, let's say, a concert, it's uh, there was a lot more genuine talent back then. And when I look at bands like Hanson, like that, I thought I was too cool for school. I just look at them. I'm like, <laughs> those kids are all singing in key, and there's no auto tuning. Yeah. This is live. And, uh, you know, when you look at a group like the Backstreet Boys who made it uh, their mission to be like, okay, look, we're not like those other boy bands that were thrown together where half of them can't sing. The Backstreet Boys were kind of like, hey, we're going to go to a malls. We're going to sing a cappella. We're going to go on live television. This is what we do. And we can, you know, we don't need studio help to sound like to sound like us. And that's, you know, that, that's a dying art. And I want you to do something for me that you haven't done for anybody else. So go ahead. Now, this is the first time they've ever performed this First time we've ever done it live. Yep. So. It just it worked it out. Might be the one we interviewed with. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh Okay, God. give me a... That's okay. Okay, so you were scared. I'm scared. Oh, here we go. First time I told you. <sighs> but my love is all I have to give. Without you, I don't think I can live. I wish I could give the world to you. But love is all I have to give. Uh, when you have good songs, good songs stick with you. You, they always say that you know you can tell where you were in life by the song that was on the radio and now is in your head. And it always amazes me when you hear a song that you haven't heard in twenty years and then you just start singing along because your brain opened that door and went, oh, I know all the lyrics to this song. And whether it's who let the dogs out mm -hmm. or whether it's uh, I get knocked. Out. It's just one of those things where 
you feel great because it was such a good time of your life. And, uh, and I love that that's kind of the soundtrack. The 90s was an awesome time for great music. And uh, some people bash it and stuff like that. But I think it was a really, really uh, a good time uh, for music. And, and when you hear a Spice Girls, yeah, it's disposable. Yeah, it's, but everybody knows all the lyrics to Wannabe. All right, well, right? I'm going to get into this right now. Um, I've seen some pictures of you and the Spice Girls where they uh, seem awfully affectionate, and uh, <laughs> I shake my fist in anger as the 12-year-old in me is forever jealous. And Tell me about the Spice Girls. What, what do they smell we like? We met them a year before <laughs> they were ever released. We were over in the UK doing a Brit list, and... Uh, the lady who was co-hosting with me was Juliet Roberts, mm -hmm. uh, not the actress, but singer, the jazz singer. And she was managed by 19 Management. They were working on a group uh, that they were called, I think, the Spicy Girls at that time or something. And so we ended up going to the offices. We met them. And that was cool. And, you know, it was just an up and coming band. And then we also interviewed Soul to Soul and a, and a bunch of others and, and had a really good time in the U.K., and then a year later, here's Wannabe, this massive, massive hit, and the album is doing really, really well, and they're coming over to do an interview with us, who they've already met. And so there was that direct, immediate, and I've always felt this way about doing interviews. You want to make somebody feel comfortable, you want to make them uh, talk about real stuff uh, mm -hmm. and, and who they really are. And so because there was that familiarity, because they already knew who we were, there was an immediate connection. And then, you know, they, they all like to flirt. So it worked out really, really well. I didn't hate that day at all. <laughs> you should see the uncut. I should, you know what? One of these days I have the uncut interview. Yeah. And it's so funny. And some of the stuff that happens. And uh, then you can find out how I got the lipstick on my head. I should actually download that and put it up online and Please let people do. watch it. Nobody's ever seen the full interview and the fun that went on. So they're, they're really wonderful ladies and, and a lot of fun to be around. And then, of course, the photos. And I mean, who at that time got that kind of access to, to the Spice Girls? It was, it was so awesome. It was, um, it was, I became a man watching those videos, Dan. I, <laughs> I was, I, yeah, I was hitting, I was hitting puberty. I'm just like, I cannot stop looking. I don't, I don't know what it is, but the video in the desert to become one. That's, that's, that's actually, right. that's actually the one like, which, which was your favorite. Um, I really like Jerry Hollowell, but I, I also really liked, uh, Posh Spice Victoria, like just not, not, not to sound, uh, too. Not to sound too crude or something like that, but something awoke that never fell asleep when I watched Jerry Hallowell do her thing. Actually, I ran into Jerry Hallowell back in New York City by complete chance. I was with with the Backstreet Boys mm -hmm. for the Millennium launch, okay, and we were at MTV, and uh, and Jerry Hallowell walks up and goes. Well, how are you? I haven't seen you in a little while. Gives me a hug, and everybody's looking at me like, who is this guy? Who cares who this guy is? How is he getting a hug from her and why does she know him? And it's just such a weird, you know, like it was one of those things. She, uh, one of my, like, well, you know, what? all of them were my favorite, but specifically Jerry, um, Baby Spice was great. Mel B, awesome. Really, really. She, here's a great story that not a lot of people know. After we did the interview, um, she asked me about the glasses I was wearing. And she said, where did you get them? And I said, oh, I got them in London. Uh, when we were over at doing Brit List. And she goes, what's the place called? And I told her, and she actually went and got the same glasses because I had sent her to that uh, that optometrist. And that, op yeah. that optometrist sent you flowers and a thank you note. <laughs> 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 I wish, no. And also, uh, Mickey Sobakan and Rachel uh, from Hamilton, Ontario, want to say hi and happy birthday to Kathy. And they say, we love your head. We really think it looks good. And you look good without your gla gla can't read. glasses. There we go. Got to love that head. Thank you very much. Well, I wanted to do one thing beforehand. Yeah, sure. I kept, I kept this. And people always ask me if I still have it. It's that toque. From the hit list, do you oh remember my. this? Oh my, that is the single most 90s thing I have ever seen in my life. Exactly. Yeah. I had to show it to you because I, I have all my hit list stuff. 
All right, Dan, thank you so much. This was amazing, really informative, and uh, I feel I feel inspired to go talk to even more of you crazy cats about uh, the wonderful past. Uh, I, thank you for celebrating this time of your life uh, with me, telling your stories, and uh, thank you for risking being a little late for work to tell all me all these stories. I appreciate it a lot, Dan. Yeah! He does not swing. From Vines! Get your head out of the gutter. Yeah, that Tarzan Dan is on Q107. Brian, thank you. Uh, pleasure was all mine, man. All right. Thanks again, man. Appreciate it. Have a, gra- have a great day. Thanks a lot. Play nice in the sandbox. Check out more episodes of You, Me, and YTV on Facebook and YouTube. Sweet one-of-a-kind interviews with PJ Fresh Bill, PJ Paul, Tarzan Dan, the cast of Student Bodies, the voice acting cast of Sailor Moon, and much, much more. Exclusively on You, Me, and YTV. Season 2.